comes down to this. Six seconds to play in Super Bowl 34. McNair drops, throws right side for Dyson. He dives for the end zone. It's taken. Mike Jones made the tackle. He came up one yard short. It's taken. The greatest show on turf is the St. Louis Rams, right? You got Kurt Warner, you got Isaac Bruce, you got Torrey Holt, you got Marshall Falk, like all of the guys, they're all there. But you managed to hold them to three field goals, so it's 9-0 at the half. 28-yard attempt by Wilkins is good. And then you come storming back, you know, two long drives, Eddie George touchdowns, but then Kurt Warner finds, I think it was Isaac Bruce, 75 yards, one play. Warner to throw. we are again it's two minutes and we need to go down the field and we need a touchdown so steve mcnair is trotting you out into the field like take me to that moment like what is being said i don't think there was an inkling of doubt in any of us in any of our minds i think we it was familiar territory for us we were built for that we were built for the comeback built for being resilient and finding ways to win football games and then you start seeing it just unfold. Mac scramble, big play, dump off the Jackie Harris, big play, Iceberg, then myself, I got a catch or two. And, and we just kept trying to methodically get down the field. And even to the, the play before the last play where you see McNair have 600 pounds worth of men draped on him, yep. step yeah. on his feet and hits me right there on the five yard line. That epitomized the, the the character and the resilience of that team in that one play, let alone the last play of the game. But that was a broken play, right? It wasn't drawn up like that. Like, so what? You run your route, and then you're like, okay, Steve's scrambling around. I had a um, I had a double move on the outside, and they the, the way they played their coverage, they play so deep, they're trying to keep everything in front of them that I broke off. And then once I saw Steve scramble, I just was trying to find the, the available space. You can kind of see in the highlights, if you watch them, you see me kind of peek back, trying to find out what the defender is, to see kind of time I have. And um, Steve found me. And let's go to where I'm sure you go to um, when you close your eyes at night. You're on the 10 yard line and you're in motion. You come towards Steve, you go back and you run a slant. Well, it was a, a double, a combo route. So on the other side was our man concept and onto our side with me and Frank Wycheck is the zone concept. So. Essentially, based on depending on coverage, depends on which side Steve goes. So we use the motion to, dic to dictate coverage to see what it is. Once he recognized zone, once I recognize zone, I know which side of the ball he's coming to. And I knew he's coming our way. At that point, Frank is the primary receiver. He was the primary target. He is carrying the vertical past the linebacker. In the field of play, the linebacker has to make a choice. He is, his his first thing is to make sure they don't jump off anything quick to Frank, but is eyeballing me for anything quick inside. Yep. The field being shorter, he doesn't have to carry Frank as long, and he can he can spot me a little sooner. So he spotted me, he came off a little quicker than he would have had we been like on the 20 yard line, let's say. And in essence, I did beat him across his face. He didn't get a solid shot on me. Yeah, I mean, he got him. He got him with. The, he got him with the back with the left with the left hand. The left hand came back came around. Came back around and pulled the. He, he couldn't around. extend it's his like leg. Jaws no, in slow motion. I, yeah. I think it's a perfectly run route. It's a perfectly thrown ball, and it's a perfectly made tackle. tackle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Was there any it. point yeah. where you were like, "I've done it"? Because he's, <laughs> yeah. he seems to like grab you with one hand and I was trying to put my head myself in your shoes. I was like, was there any point yeah. where you're like, I've got it? Yes. You know, and I, I, I've told this story in five, 20 years, but, and I, I tell people, all I remember is how yellow and vivid that end zone was. I just saw yellow paint. I saw the paint in the end zone. I just, I knew I was in there. I didn't think he didn't have a solid grasp on me. And he, he said this over the years kind of my momentum helped swing his legs around so he can get his left hands on my on my knee so I couldn't drive that knee up to extend that last yeah. three that I needed. Yeah. And, and to me, I just I just remember that yellow paint and it just seemed so close. Like I just, it was right there. I just felt like, and that's why you see me extend my arm. Like I felt like I, I, I was there. I felt like I was gonna get that nose of the ball across that paint. And even that last little bit when I was on the ground, one more extension, I thought, Man, they're gonna have to review this, right? They're gonna. Right. I did it, in. it is 
caught by Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle. Do you have like a, a fear of yellow paint now? Like if they're going to paint the school, they're like, this is the colors bit, we're man. thinking for the school, bit. Kevin. Uh, yellow or we're not doing yellow. There's a couple of classrooms that are painted yellow, man. I won't, won't go into them. Yeah. <laughs>